I'm Professor Daisy Miller from the Department of Writing Studies and Composition, and we're going to be talking about the common reading for 2016, which is Harry Collins' Are We All Scientific Experts Now? Looking at the cover really reinforced the argument he's trying to make throughout the book. It's all in lowercase. The question mark is very large, and it's displayed prominently. And for me, this is the first experience you have with his argument asking us to interrogate what we know and how we come to know things. There's no capital letter. There's no kind of authoritative letter there starting the sentence. We almost come in mid-discussion. And the question mark is a cue to us to be critical about how knowledge is built, how we should even read this book, and I think it's a good reminder to people in the university, whether it's faculty or students, that what we're trying to do is to cultivate a spirit of inquiry. There is a lot of knowledge at our fingertips that you can Google something, you can look at a website that talks about climate change or vaccines or your own health and feel as if you're becoming knowledgeable. And he reminds us that there's it's necessary to evaluate and assess this type of information. And again, being a critical thinker and approaching all disciplines, uh, humanities, social sciences, natural sciences, with a healthy modesty about what we know and an understanding that not all evidence is the same is something that we all have to think about as citizens and human beings, but especially when you're in a university setting. This is something that I think we cultivate and, and remind people again and again to think about how knowledge is made, how communities of experts, um, contributional experts uh, is one of the terms that, that Collins talks about, how they really assess evidence and how much one needs to know to be a contributing member to a, of a field. A lot of the moves that Collins makes in this book are very similar to a linguist who, whom I use a lot of my classes named Paul G. And he talks about discourse communities and your primary discourse community being how you, the language you were raised with, knowing table manners, the things that come very naturally to you because of the situation in which you were raised. And then as you go through life, you are introduced to secondary discourse communities where you learn new ways of communicating and dominant discourses, which is a type of interaction with people, language and cues that really gives you access to a kind of cultural currency. So maybe becoming um, familiar with the language of political science and how political scientists will talk to each other. But it's a very, very gradual apprenticeship. For G, this is a really difficult immersion that you have to go through. And Collins talks about this too as he listens to scientists, right? And he becomes, as he says, embedded with um, gravitational wave scientists and listens to them and can begin to speak the way they do. And I think that this is very resonant for, for my field, which is writing studies, because we talk a lot about not just, you know, not feeling disenfranchised from this language, but listening to it and understanding how it works, understanding the moves that writers and thinkers make. Collins calls this kind of a, a meta expertise. And one of the things that G says that's kind of fun is he talks about this, he calls it mush fake, which is actually a term that comes from another field, and how you can almost fake your way into communicating with experts, but it's not necessarily a, bla a bad thing. It's understanding the different moves they make and the vocabulary choices they make and how they evaluate evidence without understanding the field completely. You can participate in it. This reading is really well chosen for this particular moment in time because as we're getting into the national elections, we are going to see, and we've already seen with the candidates, more and more discussion about sciences. And Collins talks directly about things like climate change or vaccines, things that the candidates themselves have already talked about. And although Collins doesn't delve directly into policy implications, nevertheless, the idea of being able to evaluate how a candidate 
would potentially make policy based on beliefs is something that we have to think very seriously about. So what kind of evidence are the candidates using to back up their claims? How do the scientists suggest that the voters assess science themselves? And so Collins gives us a way to understand science that I think will make us more thoughtful citizens in assessing the candidate's uh, position with regard to science and to potential policy itself. And I, I think this book is really interesting because I don't think it's the easiest book to read. I think that, and if you read reviews of it, you'll see there are critiques of Collins himself and how he approaches it. After all, he's not a scientist. He's a sociologist. A sociologist. But I think that's one of the reasons this book is so great, is because it, it asks you as a reader to question the book itself and to question his questioning of science.